Hey guys, today we're driving the 2022 Mini Cooper Electric. This starts at under $30,000. It has 110 miles of electric driving range. It's front wheel drive. We've got a funky, cool looking interior, kind of this greenish, yellowish theme, a beautiful red exterior. Let's walk you around this new Mini Cooper Electric, show you what it looks like inside and out. We'll take it for a drive and give you guys some thoughts on what it's been like to live with this week. So pretty fun little electric car. It's got a decent amount of power. It's got 181 horsepower from a 32.6 kilowatt hour battery pack. And um, yeah, let's walk outside and show you what this thing looks like. Got some funky noises on startup. The outside pretty much just looks like your standard Mini Cooper. We're on winter tires today. You've got this little electric mini logo on the back, a yellow S logo next to the Cooper. Here's your charge port. There you go. You've got 50 kilowatt DC fast charging capability. Nice looking mini Cooper. I love the size of these things. They're fun to drive. These new minis are super refined. They ride well, they handle great. They have pretty good NVH over bumps. Got a little bit of trunk space back here. There's our uh, standard charge cable that you just plug into your garage. I've been charging this all week on my uh, 240 plug in the garage and it's been charging up very quickly. Get to a zero to full battery in just a few hours. Yeah, I mean, not much to say on the outside. It looks pretty familiar. Let's see what's under the hood. I assume just a bunch of uh, wires and electric bits. Yeah, nothing special here. Just uh, a big motor. Not a lot of room in this Mini for uh, extra stuff. <laughs> See the back seats. Got a little bit of room back there. Got your ISOFIX child seat latches, though I imagine they'd be pretty hard to access. Little cup holders. I've had a bunch of Mini Coopers this last year, and uh, I do enjoy driving them. They're kind of still one of the most fun front wheel drive cars to get in and drive. Looks like it's turned off on us while we were walking around. It's okay, we get to hear the startup sequence one more time. Automatic climate control with auto fan speed. This has a uh, Signature Plus package for $4,000 that includes upgraded Harman Kardon sound system, better infotainment, navigation, CarPlay compatibility, the sunroofs, all that good stuff. We'll open those up, get a little bit more light in the cabin. I like these sports seats. They look pretty nice. This cloth with leather and contrast stitching is really sharp. Get a little place to put the your phone in here with some uh looks like a plaid little grippy rubber area armrest flips up too you've got your usb port down there a little cigarette lighter port and uh, apple carplay connects wirelessly too which is great this is a touch screen and you have this little scroll wheel down here to control things Seems like a pretty responsive screen. Love the contrast, love the display. Sound system sounds good. We've got simple controls on the steering wheel here, nothing fancy. This little gauge here, which is matte, looks pretty sharp. You got your power meter over here and uh, your state of charge on the right side. We're at 93% charge. It's cold out today, only 17 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's giving us an estimated range of 65 miles, which is not that great, but in the real world, uh, depending on how you drive, should get that, if not a little bit more. There's your reverse camera. Here it makes a slight noise. Here, let's turn auto fan speed off when you're reversing, just to kind of give pedestrians outside the vehicle an idea that you're moving. There's a speaker on the front of the vehicle, speaker in the rear of the vehicle. Just a subtle electric car driving noise, which I kind of like.
We have a control down here to adjust our regenerative braking off throttle. So there's a setting for a low regenerative braking, which is pretty much off and uses the brake pads. The car defaults to high regen when you start it up. And I found that to be a pretty nice drive mode. You do have a couple different drive modes, sport, mid, green, and green plus. Mostly I've just been living it on the balanced mid setting this week and it's been pretty fun to drive. Takes a little time for the battery to warm up and give you full power. You can see it's kind of limiting our output right now. Regenerative braking though is super strong from a start, from a cold start, so to speak. So that's nice. You can pretty much use the regen for all of your stops unless if you need a panic brake or you come in a little bit too hot into a corner, which happens. Power delivery in this Mini is pretty smooth. It kind of blends onto the power slowly. It's not all immediate all at once. And I like that. Sometimes I would rather have a smoother electric car than something that is immediately responsive and too abrupt. Handling's pretty good too. We are on winter tires today, so we're not gonna be getting the full grip experience, but stability control is a little bit intrusive at the limit, but for the most part, this is a still a really fun chassis. I don't feel that much extra weight from the battery and electric motor up front compared to a standard Mini. The ride quality is fantastic. The NVH is actually pretty good too. 75 miles an hour, not a ton of wind noise. I like my driving position. Ride quality is nice, not too stiff. Mini's really done a great job refining their cars. This is something you could easily daily drive, easily take on a long trip and it wouldn't beat you up. Nice visibility all throughout too. Waiting for the battery to warm up just a little bit so we can get some more acceleration out of this thing. We've got a sport mode that gives us a little bit more power on throttle initially. Makes your acceleration curve a little bit less linear and more aggressive on tip-in. We are limited to, I believe, 95, 96 miles per hour top speed. That comes up a little bit quicker than you would expect in this car. It is fun having that immediate power off the line. As far as front wheel drive electric cars go, this is definitely one of my favorite. The power is balanced, it puts it down really well. It's not just spinning one tire out of every single corner. And this being a Mini, the chassis is fantastic. It feels just a little bit more solid, a little bit more weighted around corners, which I think is kind of nice. There is a lot of understeer. Now battery's warming up a little bit, get a bit more power out of this thing. Brake pedal feel is nice. I mean, really, this just drives like a normal Mini Cooper S, but it's electric. We have full electric power now, maximum torque. It's been so cold this morning. This is really the first time this has happened. I was driving this around earlier this week, about 25, 30 degree temperatures, and it wasn't throttling my power at all on startup. Yeah, in sport mode, it's pretty responsive, pretty immediate.
traction off. It definitely gives you a little bit of wheel spin, but not terrible. I've seen worse. There we go. That's more like it. Actually pretty quick until you get up to speed. Around town, this is just a blast to drive. One complaint though, I keep finding myself inadvertently setting the cruise control to resume, which is kind of dangerous when I'm around corners. My inside of my palm will hit this button and uh, resume my cruise control, which is a little bit disconcerting. I'll also turn up my volume, but that's a little bit less of a concern. All right, so how can we sum up this Mini Cooper SE Electric? Well, I think you're gonna know if a vehicle with this amount of range is gonna work with your lifestyle or not. This would make an excellent second car and make a fun little in-town runabout. I think the range is decent for a day's worth of errands or half a day's worth of errands here and there. Ultimately though, um, it still falls quite a bit short than a lot of the competition with, you know, two, 300 miles of range these days. It is really fun to drive. It's super nimble. I love the chassis. I love the NVH. I love the way this thing is to live with. There's not a lot of compromises here. And uh, this is one of my more enjoyable and more favorite front wheel drive electric cars to drive. I've always thought that, you know, the Nissan Leaf, the Chevy Bolt, they're good, but they're a little bit, the Bolt is a little bit too much of a burnout machine. Same with the Hyundais. Um, and the Nissan Leaf is just a little bit dull and boring. This kind of takes it all, blends it together, and makes a nice, exciting, comfortable, fun to drive package that is stylish and cool and affordable at the same time. Um, that said though, the range is really the only con. So kind of uh, an interesting option in the market. I love the pricing. I love the looks and feel and the drive of this thing. But ultimately, I think a lot of people are gonna be turned off with uh, the range number and the capabilities of this car. A little bit strange to see it throttling power in the cold. It's gotta be a battery management thing. Um, it's really the first time it's done that this week and I haven't driven it in a, a day or so. So everything is completely cold, 17 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, that's probably what it is. It is improving here as we're driving this a little bit more. This thing would be an autocross hero. Oh, it'd be so much fun around an autocross course. It'd be super quick. <laughs> it's just so nimble. There we go. Now we've got some good power. I love how strong Regen is. It would be nice if Mini made their chassis a little bit more playful again, but there is a lot of safe understeer in all of their cars these days. Yeah, little slalom action there. <laughs> the front end on this car does feel really good. Okay guys, well there's your Mini Cooper SE Electric. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. We'll also be posting some more videos on this on the Winding Road Magazine YouTube channel and on the Daily Motor YouTube channel. I think uh, those guys are getting this car next week, so there'll be a little bit more of a delay. I'll have a jump on them in terms of video timing, but yeah, until then, thanks for watching. There's your parking brake right down there by uh, the shifter. I like the controls on this Mini too. I mean, really nothing different from any of the other cars we've tested. Everything is very user-friendly. And uh, at first I wasn't sold on this yellow-greenish theme, but it's kind of growing on me and uh, I like it. It's fine. This is a fun car to live with. Those noises are a little bit odd though, but maybe you can turn them off in the infotainment. Okay guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you later.